my name is Rachel. Thank you for watching this video. This is the first video for Mid-South Homestead Education and today's topic is predator friendly farming or how to protect your livestock while maintaining the natural balance of wildlife in your environment. This is a topic that several people have expressed interest in and I feel that this is a very important topic for all of us who own livestock. Our livestock is very important to us and we want to keep them safe and we want to protect them as much as we possibly can. So with that said, you may be wondering, why predator friendly then? If you want to protect your livestock, why are we being friendly to the predators? <laughs> and there are several good reasons why you want to peacefully coexist with the natural predators in your environment as much as possible. Uh, one of these reasons is to protect keystone predator species. A keystone predator or a keystone species is an animal that disproportionately affects its environment. An example of this type of keystone predator would be a wolf. Now not everyone has wolves in their backyard, for which we can be thankful I think, <laughs> but even if you don't have a true keystone predator species, it's still important to maintain the natural balance of local wildlife as much as possible. Predators play a very important role in the environment. They keep the number of whatever their prey species is down and help prevent them from becoming overpopulated because overpopulated animals can then suffer from disease and famine and become a nuisance. And it's best if you can let predators stay in their environment and help keep down and keep the balance of the animals, the local wildlife in check the way that it should be. This can also prevent new and potentially worse predators from moving in. So let's say you relocate or dispatch a predator. Well, that predator was occupying a certain space in the local environment and keeping other, other predators out because of his presence. Just by him being there, he has like his own turf and the other predators aren't really going to encroach on his turf that much. When you remove that animal, then you have more predators that are going to move in and occupy that space that you just emptied. So you're not really removing a, a predator or a threat, you're just changing it. You're just switching out to a different one. And the next one may be even worse and more aggressive than the one that's there now. You never know. It's kind of the better the devil you know than the one that you don't kind of situation where you want to learn to deal with what's there in the best possible way rather than opening it up for something else to move in that could be an even bigger problem. And coexisting peacefully with them also prevents losses before they happen. So if you can find a way to keep the predators from harming your livestock without harming the predators or removing them and relocating them, then you're not experiencing losses. You're not trying to react to a problem after it occurs. You're preventing it from ever happening, which is a much better situation, of course. So how do you be predator friendly? Well, first, just consider your local predators. What do you have? Do you have coyote, fox, wolves, bears, raccoons, if you have chickens? You, you know, just look at your livestock, what's going to be a threat to them, what species are potentially harmful to the type of livestock you have, and try to get to know your environment and be aware of what you may be dealing with. Cows and chickens, for example, don't require the same level of protection. And then at the same time, if your biggest predator is a fox, you're not going to need the same level of protection as if your biggest predator is a mountain lion or a bear. Uh, preparing secure fencing and housing to both keep livestock in and predators out is very important. It's not always going to be foolproof if you have livestock, especially goats like I have, you know that sometimes they find a way out and unfortunately sometimes predators find a way in even when you think you've made your fencing and housing airtight. But 
just starting out doing it the best that you can will prevent a lot of problems. I personally like to run electric on the inside of my fences and electric wire in addition to the regular fence. I find that that helps a lot and is the most effective means of keeping my livestock in. And some people in high predator areas where they're having a lot of predators or they're having a lot of trouble with predators will run electric wire along the outside of their fencing as well. Thankfully, we have not had to do that with ours because we don't have that high of a predator problem, but that is an option if you find yourself in that situation where things are really getting difficult with the predators. Uh, try to get to know the habits of your local predators and then schedule your grazing hours during times when predator activity is lower. So usually your highest predator activity is going to be between dusk and dawn. It's going to be at night. So if you can keep your livestock either in the closer paddocks to home or in a barn or just not out in the furthest, least well protected field at night and during other high predator feeding periods, that will help. Um, provide safe shelters for your livestock to give birth. This is really important um, for a number of reasons, but speaking specifically about predators, even with your larger livestock like a cow that normally, say if your only predators are coyotes, normally cattle aren't at risk for coyotes. But then if you have a cow giving birth, that puts her at greater risk because she's in a vulnerable position. And then the calf, of course, isn't even gonna be able to stand immediately, is very vulnerable, and if a pack of coyotes finds your cow while she's calving, things can go downhill quickly and you can lose your livestock. So it's best to put them in a secure, safe place to give birth. Frequently and randomly check your livestock. Um, don't just have your schedule because the predators will figure you out. So in the same way that if you're a little bit late feeding your livestock, they start to make a fuss because they know that you're supposed to have fed them already and you're running a little late and they don't like that. Well, the predators can get that same sense of your timing as well and know like, okay, they come out at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. and then they're never out at any other time. And predators tend to be a little bit wary of humans most of the time. So your presence, if they never know when you're going to show up, that's going to make them be a little bit more on their toes and a little bit less likely to come bother your stuff because they don't know when you're going to be there. And then my personal favorite means of protecting my livestock is to use guardian animals to protect them. Um, there are different species of guardian animal you can choose from. Uh, the most popular ones are livestock guardian dogs or LGDs, llamas, and donkeys. Choose your species carefully when you decide to get a guardian animal. Um, choose your species based on your own personal needs, based on the predators that you have in your area, and based on the type of livestock that you have. Introduce your guardian animals regardless of what you choose. Uh, slowly and under careful supervision and be sure that their behavior is appropriate. Even if they're coming from a working home or a working breeder, you just, you never want to just throw a new animal out in your herd and walk away and let them do whatever. You want to be sure that they're going to be doing their jobs and behaving the way that they should be. Um, obviously, learn about how to take care of and train your guardian species before you get one. That's kind of common sense, but sometimes I like to state the obvious. Um, and then don't let your guardian animals be overrun by predators. So it's not just important to choose the right kind of guardian animal for your situation, but it's also important to have enough of them. Um, if you're dealing with a large pack of coyotes, for example, and you just stick one dog in a field, that dog's not gonna be able to take care of that many predators 
what can happen is they might hurt your dog, they might kill your dog, or they might distract it at one end while another one of the pack goes after the animals. And he's just not going to be able to take care of your livestock if he's overrun. So again, that comes down to knowing the types of predators in your area and knowing how many they are and how big of a problem you have to base your number and type of guardians off of that. Now I want to talk a little bit about the different livestock guardian species that I mentioned. I'm going to start with my personal favorite, which are guardian dogs. I personally have two great Pyrenees. I love them. I would never be without them. They're awesome dogs. Um, but there are a lot of different breeds of guardian dogs. And every person has their own preference. Uh, if you live in Texas, for example, you may not want the great Pyrenees that have the longer hair. You may want a shorter hair breed because of the heat. Different things like that. If you live in a really cold area, maybe you'll want one with the longer hair. But each, even though guardian dogs are bred for the same purpose, each breed does have its own unique tendencies and traits. So just do a little bit of research and find out which breed works best for you because the one that works best for me may not be the type that you like the best. Um, whatever you choose though, be sure that you do get a guardian breed because they have been bred for many, many years to bond to and guard livestock. You don't want to bring a dog that was bred for something else like herding, even though herding animals work with livestock, they don't work with them to protect them, they herd them and they're going to do a different action when you put them in your flock. Um, you obviously don't want something like a hunting dog that has a high prey drive living with your livestock. You want the right type of breed that knows how and has been bred to do the job that you need it to do. And you also want one that has been bred and raised in a working environment where its parents are guarding stock and it grew up in that environment living with livestock, seeing its parents work so that you know it's from a working home and has that good foundation to be the good guardian dog that you need it to be. Um, guardian dogs often work best in pairs or more. Just depending on your situation may depend on how many you need. But oftentimes if there's two of them, there's less of a chance of them being distracted by something else and then another predator getting to the flock. There's just a better opportunity for them to work together as a pair to protect the herd. Um, my Great Pyrenees, I personally do not have them working in pairs because I do not have that large of a flock or that large of a pasture space. But if you do have a larger flock or a larger area, a pair may be the best choice for you. And dogs are appropriate guardians for most species and against most predators, just so long as you have the right number and type of dog. Um, however, sometimes even guardian dogs will attack poultry, so use extra caution if you're wanting a guardian dog to protect your chickens or other poultry species because sometimes they do not bond to poultry and protect them as well as they do mammal species. Um, llamas and donkeys, unlike LGDs, they don't really bond to the flock, they usually bond to each other, but they protect their smaller livestock just by the fact that they don't like predators. So it's kind of more of a they're looking out for their own interest, but by doing that they're also protecting the smaller livestock. Um, they do work best for smaller predators like coyotes, but at the same time they may not take care of very small predators like a fox or a raccoon because they may not see it as a threat to themselves and therefore not worry about it. I actually um, know a lady who had llamas to protect her chickens and she looked out her window one day and a fox was getting in the chicken house and the llamas were just laying down chewing their cud and completely ignoring it because the fox wasn't bothering them. So you do need to take that into account as well. Um, they're not usually a good choice for larger predators for obvious reasons. And one very important thing 
is that you should never, ever use an intact male, llama, or donkey as a guardian animal living with your livestock. The reason being is that they can often be aggressive because of their hormones, and they want to breed with the livestock that they're with, like goats or sheep. And with a llama, for example, they may lay on top of your sheep or goats and suffocate or crush them. And male donkeys have been known to grab small livestock by the back of their neck and fling them and injure or kill them. So it's not safe to have an intact male in with your smaller livestock. If you do want to, say, breed llamas or donkeys and you want to have an intact male on your property, house it in, for example, a perimeter fence, maybe around the outside of your property where it doesn't have access to your smaller livestock, but can still be there in sort of a buffer zone on the front lines if a predator comes through that fence first. But just never have them with your smaller livestock because it is not safe for your livestock. So what do you do when your coexistence fails? You've tried to keep the predators out, you've tried to protect your livestock through other means, and you still experience losses. Um, this does happen, especially with poultry and especially in areas with really high numbers of predators or really aggressive predators. Sometimes, despite how hard you try and despite all that you do, sometimes you will experience losses. So, when that happens, uh, try to identify the source of your loss. Try to figure out what it was that uh, killed your livestock or injured your livestock. You can do that by looking at the means that they used to kill them or possible bite or claw marks or tracks left in the dirt. All of that, you know, you may not always have that there to look at depending, like if a hawk gets your chicken, you're obviously not going to have any tracks or evidence to give you a clue, but you can still look for that and try to see if there is anything left behind. Um, or you can set up a camera system like a surveillance camera or a barn camera or if you want a cheaper option just get like a trail camera like what hunters use and set it up to try and catch the predator on camera so you know what you're dealing with. Uh, look for holes in your defenses like did the guardians get outnumbered? Um, did something dig under your fence? Was there a hole in the fence you didn't see? That kind of thing. And trying to stay on top of fence maintenance can be helpful too, but sometimes you just get a hole in the fence and you don't catch it until something happens. Um, familiarize yourself with your state and federal laws, which may protect the predator. Um, it's different in every state and you just want to be sure, especially if you're dealing with a predator that may be considered endangered or protected, that you are legally able to protect your livestock against that predator. Um, if you're not sure about that, you can contact your local wildlife agencies or extension agents, um, park rangers, that kind of thing. Contact them if you need assistance dealing with a predator or if you need to know what you legally can do to protect your livestock from a predator. Um, and do consider live traps and relocating if possible. It's not always possible, but that is something to try. And do be aware, um, I just want to say as a quick note, that wandering dogs are a very common predator against livestock. So even if you're in an area that doesn't have a high amount of local predators like coyotes or wolves or mountain lions or what have you, wild species, your stray dogs can be a big problem. And the laws um, about protecting livestock against stray dogs may be different in each state too. I know what they are in my state, but 
in your state they may be different so just look them up and know what you legally have rights to do to protect yourself in that area and again if you're not sure contact someone who knows so thank you for watching this video i hope that it was helpful as i stated before this was created for and by mid-south homestead education our website is homesteadeducation.com and we can also be found on facebook by the name mid-south homestead education and if you're not from the Mid-South, that's okay. We still want you to join our online community and still have access to our resources because we're not just talking about things that affect the Mid-South. We want to help homesteaders in the Mid-South and beyond. Um, a couple of resources I have linked here are predatorfriendly.org, which is a great place to go to get some more information about coexisting with predators. And then lgb.org, which is a great website to go learn about the different breeds of livestock guardian dogs. Thank you again. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you on our next video.